this is a uh, Technocopia blister. Through here, we've got a lounge uh, area that's during the school day. Often, uh, parents help will hang out because there's a lot of homeschooled kids and after school programs. So, the parents will kind of hang out. Through here, we've got the uh, classroom. Um, we got Annie and Annie. Um, and here is our classroom. The, uh, the, the kids programming runs, uh, let's see, everything from chemistry, math, uh, engineering, Minecraft classes. Uh, we have uh, our first year, uh, first Lego robotics team, which is, uh, what they, what they get? Like, uh, they got sixth place. Sixth place, in yeah. their In their division. Very first competition. Very first year. Yeah, yeah. it was awesome. And our, and our kids are also a lot younger, right? They're, uh, the, the teams are often like in I'm their not, early teens. I'm not super knowledgeable about this, but we had um, a mix of like Worcester Public School students and homeschool students who were, I think, 8 to 12 was mm -hmm. our age group. Yeah, Andy Cohn, uh, also on our board of directors and uh, prepping for a members meeting tonight. I, I am. Yeah. yeah, we do a monthly members meeting. Where we gather everybody and talk about what's going on in the space. So, outside of that, the kids also learn a lot on uh, 3D printing, electronics classes, you know, a lot of the more difficult classes uh, to tackle at home. Um, so, right out here, we also have our, uh, a couple of our 3D printers, um, as well as a CAD workstation. The, um, the main workhorse right now is this TAS um, 6. Uh, we will be getting a second one of these. We just uh, got a grant for $87,000 so from Mass De uh, Development. It's our second year in a row of getting that. Uh, so we'll be phasing out or moving the creator into the classroom. Uh, we've got a couple of those kicking around still. Uh, we've got a small uh, kitchenette area too. Um, this will be one of the areas that we're revamping with our, uh, with our new build out. Um, Part of that 87K, we'll be going to new infrastructure. Nibbles. <laughs> Nibbles started as a, uh, as a kid's program for one of their math classes in the back there. Um, so basically, they uh, ran their own little store, learned uh, about math, and uh, shrink as all the food disappeared. Um, for right now, I've just been taking care of it until they come back into session. Um, but it's been fun. It's nice to have something small to grab a, grab a handful of food. <laughs> Outside of just shops, we also have personal areas that we rent. Uh, this is my mess right now. Uh, I, I like to work on motorcycles and cars. I'm an IT guy by trade, but you know when I'm here, I'm running the metal shop and running the space. Um, Ian, uh, a partner from the, the old DIY space days, he runs the wood shop. Um, this is his personal space. Uh, there is. A weird thing with woodworkers, they're, uh, they're very, very meticulous. Uh, well, metal guys just tend to be messy. Um, this is our metal shop. Well, if excuse me, I had a class in here earlier today uh, for WPI students. Got a bridge port, a uh, big compressor, shop uh, press. Made TIG, plasma cutting. Um, this is a really small scale metal shop. We are on the sixth floor of a building in downtown Worcester. So we can't really go too big with it. Due to the small space of the shop, uh, I've built a, a small mounting plate for everything. Uh, as you can see, everything's got a nice stand. So you just move it over, bolt it down, and then you can work from there. Um, everything basically will be modular when, I'm set, when, when all is said and done. Uh, so you can move and, and do what you need to do for bigger projects. We also, uh, cool enough, we were able to get an oxy acetylene permit up here, so you're able to do oxy and uh, um, the plasma cutter. Um, the big addition that we'll be getting here is the uh, CNC plasma cutter at uh, Lincoln Torchmate with our grant. Um, this right here is a, a preheat oven and uh, can be used for powder coat as well. I think it maxes out around five, five, six hundred. Uh, degrees. You don't need that much for, for preheating, like cast materials, yeah. uh, aluminum, getting it to set right. So, hmm. we have a, uh, a small electronics back. Um, we've got a few WPI alum, uh, electrical engineers, 
who uh, build circuits and, and repair just about everything we break. Um, looking to try and build some more curriculum around this and programming in the coming year. Uh, it's something that's kind of languished. Um, seems like every day there's a, some other fire to put out rather than you know, programming and, and whatever. Uh, through here, uh, we've got our wood shop. Just make sure it's not in use. Yeah. Uh, our wood shop is probably one of the most well appointed sections of the, of the shops. Um, for the most part, our, uh, our woodworkers are tradesmen who actually do this for a living rather than just uh, tinkerers or, or uh, hobbyists um, like you find at most maker spaces. Like um, Ian's a timber framer. Spencer, uh, who will pass through as a timber framer, and, and these guys rely on the shop to make their living. So um, that really kind of sets it apart, in a sense, from the other shops. Um, yeah, um, but uh, it's a good old rock wall down there. But we also have this uh, attached piece saw. That's for uh, that's a special tool for timber framing. Um, basically, you can uh, resaw down your your timbers and uh, be a little bit. A little bit much for a regular band saw. Like this has obviously a lower table, a much thicker blade, um, made for taking out big, big timbers. And then there's this, uh, this old guy back here. His, um, I think you can get a good view of that. But uh, you can cut molding with it. These are all like CNC knives. So you can basically, uh, send out and get a machine, any profile you would ever want to recreate um, molding, you know, period correct molding. One thing, one thing about this so far, uh, all of these rooms that we've been in um, didn't exist when we, we, when we moved in. We built this entire floor. It was a wide open floor when we got here. Mostly uh, covered in these big steel plates. Um, the whole floor was a um, storage for books. Uh, Davis Publication makes kids art textbooks so um, uh, they had just been using this floor for storage until we moved in so each of these rooms we built out with our original uh, Indiegogo funding and a lot of sweat equity from um, uh, our members and our staff uh, we had to build out an ADA bathroom and all of the uh, accoutrements to get our permitting um, the central area is also more cost, uh, more members pays. Uh, we do have a uh, bunch of common use tools um, you know, for use in the different shops or out here if you had smaller projects. We try to limit the uh, the noise and dust into the shops uh, whenever possible, like sanding and, and things like that, hammering. Um, so. Side of that, um, we also have uh, coming online with that new grant, a uh, sewing and leatherworking shop, uh, and an expansion of our glass shop, I believe. Um, this is one of our newer shops, is the uh, glass studio. Um, this uh, came online, I think, last year um, with our with our first grant. Um, so far, it's uh been difficult to admin like it's not something I'm, I've ever been used to so um, uh, and there's other places in the city that do glass like um, the Worcester Center for Crafts for instance is, which has been around for a hundred years they teach a lot of craft and, um, and um, glass they have an amazing glass studio too but it's, uh, it has had a couple you know long long members here so We've got all sorts of, I like this one. This one's been, I believe, fused uh, or fumed, I think is what they call it, when they, uh, they melt a type of metal to mm -hmm. give it that glistening. Uh, no, they're, uh, they pass through a, um, a HEPA filter and then a charcoal uh, air filter to, um, to remove any smells. The, the HEPA does most of the, the heavy lifting. That said, those are consumable, so they, uh, they can be uh, hard to maintain 
at times. Like uh, when we first had our laser hooked up, it, it seemed like we were just blowing through stuff because of the, uh, we are actually clogging the, um, the filters mm-hmm. via like a uh, heavy resin uh, yeah. in the wood. Um, plywood has a lot of glue in it. So when that vaporizes, it, it just kind of created like a heavy mat on top of uh, each of the HEPA filters. They were like a hundred bucks a pop, so they certainly were not uh, something I want to go through anymore. Over in this last section is um, an area that we'll be developing um, for the last year or so. Um, this has gone unrented. It has just been storage area um, from here through. Um, thankfully, when we moved onto the floor, we only really got um, up into these pillars. Mm-hmm. Um, then we were able to grab a bit more floor space and rent this area, like where these, these walls are now. Mm-hmm. And we've incrementally built out, and uh, the landlords have been fantastic with us. They've uh, done a lot of work on the floor and really, really subsidized our growth in a lot of ways. Over in this area, we're going to be doing more um, cubes like we had to help support our members. It's really, being on the sixth floor makes it very difficult to bring stuff in and out, especially if you have a lot of tools. So um, the people that end up getting cubes hold on to their cubes for a long time. Um, we were doing pallet rentals, but that'll, that'll be going, uh, going out with this next build out. We won't have room for them anymore. Um, so having enough cubes to support our membership on this floor is is very important. Um, The last two uh, shops are through here. We've got, um, this was an acquisition with that last grant. Um, This shop out here is uh, four by eight, does a 2D and uh, 3D profiling. It's a a great tool. Um, We also were able to uh, get a, a full spectrum laser I think this is four by three feet, 110 watt. Um, it carts through just about everything. I think it maxes out at, um, with the right focal lens, I think we can max it out to about three quarter. It definitely hourglassed a little bit, but three quarter inch uh, wood. Um, etches metal. Um, I believe we did mild steel and we've got um, anodized a little bit of little, uh, little basically you leave like a shocky white through anodized. Um, but this, uh, this is one of the most heavily used tools we have. This right here is our uh, design studio. This got basically uh, put together by a group of members. They uh, come out to the board and requested uh, building out a shop with vinyl. Um, See, they do um, screen printing, uh, vinyl, uh, buttons, art. It's um, it's incredible just how far they've moved this part along. Uh, this was probably one of the biggest generators of growth for Technicopia last year, um, and it was done on a really really small budget. Um, we were able to give them some incremental cash for a build out of this space and the the designs or the design and digital fab studio and again these are two of our most heavily used spaces um with really not a lot of money behind it outside of a couple very expensive capital uh items like the laser and the shop bot oh uh, we also just got ourselves a new front desk Consider, uh, talking about our digital fabrication. Uh, one of our members designed, he's actually one of our education admins, designed a new front desk for us. And that was all cut on our uh, shop lot. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to see the creative nature of a lot of our, uh, our members. We've got a few members right now getting into um, uh, printing, making prints with uh, offset printers. So they bought a few personal items, and they've uh, they've really jumped into it. We've got members doing 3D modeling, all sorts of different uh, vocations. So.